Hi, welcome to Do This, Not That. I'm Sue Self, licensed clinical social worker and behavioral health liaison manager for BJC Behavioral Health. Today, we're trying to understand and feel confident and competent when providing care for patients who exhibit anger or aggression. Angry and aggressive patients bring the potential for violence. Many of us know patients who have erupted in rage and caused someone, maybe even yourself, physical harm. Concern about this is legitimate. It's perfectly okay to be on guard and careful when someone is behaving badly. The key is to push through our apprehension to manage the situation as well as to provide good care. Anger is how a person expresses their disappointment, frustration, or displeasure when they experience a real or perceived transgression. Most angry people are still rational in controlling their behavior. These patients can be helped when we respond calmly and thoughtfully. Those who are farther along the anger scale require more from us. Some perceptions that can result in an angry response are a threat, something is at risk for harm or in danger of being lost. An injustice, being treated unfairly, rules, beliefs, or goals are disrespected, physically or emotionally hurt, or feeling violated, betrayed, humiliated, or ignored. A loss of freedom, decision-making, privacy, control, or independence, or the death of a loved one or the end of a relationship. Anger can be displayed verbally or non-verbally. Verbal anger is shown by the use of sarcasm, profanity, rude or disrespectful language and tone, changes in speech, such as speed, volume, or pitch. Nonverbal signs of anger are exaggerated gestures or movements, pacing, agitation, a flushed face, head, or neck, shaking or tremors, silence, glaring, or conversely, lack of eye contact. Some people might cry or shed tears. Think of anger as being about center on the agitation continuum, with rage and violence moving up the scale. Unmet needs can lead to frustration, frustration to anger, anger to aggression and violence. An aggressive patient that may be on the edge of new or repeated violence requires vastly different management than a person who may be willing and able to engage. The greatest predictor of violence is a history of violence, especially recent violence. It's important to recognize the potential for violence and manage it up front. Consider these phases of aggression. Triggering, an internal or external event that changes the patient's behavior. This presents as mostly anxious or agitated, not dangerous. Escalation, the reaction progresses and behaviors increase. This presents as increasingly agitated, physical aggression toward objects, using profanity, demanding, threatening, loud and verbally aggressive. Crisis, the patient is irrational, physically aggressive, and a dangerous situation has developed. This presents as having lost emotional and physical control, presenting immediate danger. So what causes a person to be angry or aggressive? In terms of physiology, the amygdala is the part of the brain that identifies threats and sends out an alarm. Certain hormones are released into the blood when a person is under physical or emotional stress, creating a burst of energy that triggers the desire to take immediate action. This can be caused by medical conditions, intoxication or withdrawal from drugs, alcohol, or addictive behaviors, a physiological brain abnormality or psychiatric disorder, medications such as benzodiazepines or antipsychotics or other situational causes such as acute grief, victimization, or severe stress. So what actions should a healthcare worker take? When working with an angry or agitated patient, there are four main objectives. 
ensure the safety of the patient, staff, and others in the area. Help the patient manage his anger and maintain or regain control of their behavior. Avoid the use of restraint when at all possible. Avoid coercive interventions that escalate agitation. Don't avoid or ignore the patient's anger or threats. They likely will not go away. Don't freeze. Don't take on an authoritative or challenging stance with hands on hips, in your pockets, or behind your back, or with your arms crossed. A face-to-face, shoulder-to-shoulder position is perceived as challenging. Don't take the angry person's words personally. Don't raise your voice, argue, or answer in any way that is confrontational or demeaning, insulting or abusive. Never touch, grab, hold, or even gently restrain an angry patient. Don't get close enough for an angry patient to grab or hit you. If the patient is willing and able to engage with you, here are some things that you can do. First, take steps to protect yourself from any potential violence. Rule out a medical or medication cause. Speak calmly and simply in a reassuring but firm manner with a lower pitch, volume, and rate. Respond selectively. Answer all informational questions no matter how rudely they're asked. For example, would it help if I explained why we do this? Adopt a supportive stance setting your body at an angle to the patient and keeping a distance of one leg length away. Keep your hands in view, at your sides if possible. Be as empathetic and understanding as possible. Genuinely strive to look at the situation from the other's point of view. Ask open-ended questions such as, help me understand what's upsetting you. Listen for the unmet expectation, need, want, or demand even for what's not being said. Use the philosophy of yes when possible. For example, of course we can do that, but first we need to do this. Remove the cause of the patient's anger immediately, if possible. break? Tell me what's wrong. I need some help here. Anyone give a shit? It sounds like you're angry. Well, how the hell would you feel? Are you that damn stupid? What is it that you're angry about? Like I said, where were you? I'm sorry it took so long, but I'm here now. How can I help you? But it took you forever to get here. I was with another patient. It probably did seem like forever. You're right, though. It did take me longer than usual. Well, all right, but I really need my pain medication. I can help you. I know I didn't get in to see you quickly, but I'm sorry it wasn't sooner. It's all right. Someone must have been in a really bad way. Yes, but she's all right. There shouldn't be any reason for me to be delayed unless something kind of big is going on. Tell you what, if it's an emergency, and you feel as if it's taking too long, hit that button again, and at the same time, I'll do my best to respond as quickly as I can. Does that work for you? Mm-hmm. Are you still angry? No, no, it's all right. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm usually not like this. It's okay, Lou, and I understand. You said you needed some help. Now let's check on that pain medication. Okay. I'll get it and I'll be right back. You are one damn son of a bitch. What the hell? Mr. Henderson. Mr. Henderson, can you hear me? I can hear you. You think I'm deaf? I want to. I don't care what you want. Can you tell me what's wrong? Maybe I can help. You can't help. Go on. Go. I can see you're really upset. Damn right I am. Right about now, you're deciding if this patient will de-escalate or not. If not, stop. Follow your facility's protocols. If the patient steps down a bit, get into listening mode while still keeping a safe distance 
and close to the door. Help me to understand what's happened. My stepson is a stupid, useless, damned idiot, that's all. He's certainly done something to upset you. He's gonna ruin my business while I'm stuck in this hospital. You have every right to feel angry, but it's not okay for you to throw things and yell so loudly here in the hospital. If you sit down, I can get you some water and we can talk about it, okay? I guess so. A patient who is angry or in a rage can be frightening and even dangerous, but many times it can be managed or de-escalated. Remember, try to appear calm, centered, and self-assured, even though you don't feel it. Relax your facial muscles and look confident. Your anxiety can make the patient feel anxious and unsafe, and that can escalate aggression. Be very respectful, even when firmly setting limits or calling for help. The agitated individual is very sensitive to feeling shamed and disrespected. We want him or her to know that it's not necessary to show us that they must be respected. We do this by automatically treating them with dignity and respect. Remember, you don't need to be a psychiatric professional to help a patient in this situation. You just need to know what to do. Thanks for watching.